Almighty God, our Father in heaven, you are worthy of all our praise. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we stay focused on you and we committed to follow you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence in every single household. We thank you for living in us. Grind us wisdom and accept our worship in spirit and in truth. Quote from King David, Bless the Lord, O my soul. May all that is mine to bless your holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. I will not forget all his benefit. So we sing together from Singing the Faith, number 30. Jesus stand among us at the meeting of our lives. Jesus stand among us at the meeting of our lives. Be a sweet agreement meeting of our eyes oh jesus we love you so we gather here join our hearts in unity and take away our fear so to you we're gathering out of each and every land the love between us at the joining of our hands. Oh Jesus, we love you, so we gather here. Join our hearts in unity and take away our Let us listen to the four verses from Psalm 61. The lyric will be on the screen. Let's pray that you listen to it and feel the gentleness of God's presence and He's there to listen to our prayer. And after this, Margaret would lead us into prayer. After Margaret's prayer, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. Have been a shelter 
to my prayer from the end of the earth I will cry to you when my heart is overwhelmed lead me to the rock that is higher than I for you have been a shepherd Let us pray. Father God, in this troubled world where people are facing so many dangers, war, famine, COVID, climate change, hunger, homelessness and personal tragedy, it seems we have a greater need of you than ever before. We know we cannot face all these things without the strength that knowing you are ever present brings to us. All those people, Lord, who do not know you, who face life without support from faith, friends or family, those who do not think they need God in their lives and even deny your existence, how do we reach them? Explain how their lives can be enriched by learning about you and experiencing the comfort and certainty of your care for us in all circumstances. Help us to never give up on people, to continually talk to others of your love that enables us to go on when all but hope is lost. We thank you, Lord God, for that unfailing love and ask that you will be within us when we reach out in your name. May we live as an example of your love, care for those in need, and continue to make your church a place of welcome, comfort and security for our community. We ask all this in your name, O Lord. Bless us and make us a blessing to others. Amen. And we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Some of you will be aware that we ran our Summer Holiday Club on your marks Summer Holiday Club this year and we were able to do it in person the first thing for 16 months and it's been such a blessing. We had 31 kids book on in all and our quietest day was the Friday 
where we had 19 children join us. Some of you might have seen on, um, on the Sunday the service that we ran as well and some of the things that we've been up to. But the whole idea was looking at the theme of the Olympics and what it means to be part of a team and part of Jesus' team as well. So we focused on the disciples and we looked at, um, first of all, Jesus calling the disciples and asking them to follow him. We looked at Jesus healing blind Bartimaeus and he has the power to heal. We looked at the transfiguration that Jesus proved himself to be um, the Messiah, uh, the one that the special one that the one they'd all been waiting for. And we also saw Jesus calling Peter to come and tell him to walk on water with him. And the parable of the sower that we should listen and obey Jesus' words and go and tell everyone about him. Some people might not listen and might not understand it fully or might even ignore you. But actually we're all called, just like we have uh, that we're going to hear from the Bible passage, we're all called to go and tell everyone about Jesus. And that's one of the great things. That's one of the things that we've been asked to do is to go and tell everyone about Jesus. And the Holiday Club was all about that, listening about some of the stories about Jesus and the hope that we have in him and what it is like to be part of Jesus's team, what we're all able to do, what we're all able to have a relationship with Jesus and go and tell the whole world about him. So it's been super exciting to actually meet children face to face for the first time in 16 months, to have lots of them, keep it in a safe environment and learn lots about Jesus and who Jesus is. This reading is taken from Matthew 28 verses 16 to 20, the commissioning of the disciples. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The emphasis of the Great Commission is to go and make disciples. These sometimes mean we have to leave our 99 and go out to look for one lost ship. This is the fundamental purpose of church. Our church, not meant to be a long-term convalescence care home, but need to be a training camp for spiritual warriors who wants to go out and win the world for Jesus. We have to reach out. When we are reaching out to be the fisher of men, as Jesus briefed his disciples, We are not going to be the keepers of an aquarium. Now, let's look at fishing. You can't clean the fish until you catch them. The world's in a state. We want to do our best. But in order to attract the fish, we all need a fishing nerve to grab the fish attention. Many nerves are equipped with baits with hook. But if only hook, no bait, the fish is not going to come. Therefore, the bait is essential. So, as a church, we need to offer the baits. So what are the baits? The programs, style, music, teaching, groups of sense of belong, etc., etc. And moreover, even after you catch the fish, there's still challenge 
to keep them in the boat. If a church not of a specific connection and integration strategies to assimilate the unchurched, they will work their way out of the net and back into the water. My friend, let's listen to a story from one of our congregation. Um, my name is Nidmo Simango, and originally I come from Zimbabwe. You know, I moved to the UK in 2002. When I was in Zimbabwe as a child, like every Sunday, we would go to church to, you know, to learn more about, you know, the Bible, you know, all the Bible stories. But to me, it was more of a social gathering where I met my friends, we, you know, we went to play, you know, play games in Sunday school and all that. But with maturity, I learned to understand more about what we need to do as we fellowship with one another. And uh, that led me to understand that I had to treat other people the same way I would want them, you know, to treat me. And also to, you know, like love thy neighbor kind of thing. So that, that, that took some stages in my life really to understand it. And uh, then when I came over to the UK, I managed to transfer everything I had learned then uh, into the community, into, you know, the workplace, into the church that I was attending to. Um, because, you know, sometimes you don't really understand these things until you go through challenges. That's when I realized that, yeah, when you fellowship with others, they may actually you know, make you understand it even more, especially if they are, you know, they relate to what you're going through, or maybe they have done a bit of counseling and they, they are trying to guide you in handling, you know, difficult situations. And um, on the other end as well, I was quite lucky because I got in that position where I was able to really um, help others, you know, from the, the, the relationships I had formed with other people, either from church or from the community. And to be honest, it's more my family that helped me through, because if I didn't go to church while at least I was young, I wouldn't have, I don't think I would have obtained the skills, you know, the beliefs I had, or the beliefs I am applying in, in my life. So I like to thank my family and my friends really for sort of nurturing me into, you know, into how best we can live religiously, how best we can live in the community with other people who don't even share the same beliefs as we do. So yeah, I really enjoy fellowshipping with others. And um, uh, moving to Osage with bo the boys being too young, yeah, we, we had a few challenges in terms of behavior and all that. And uh, joining the Wesley Place Methodist Church, it, it kind of was like something that was um, written in the book by the Lord that you will go to this place and you will meet and fellowship with these friends from Wesley Place. And honestly, uh, the support, the encouragement, building my confidence, my boy's confidence, you know, sometimes, you know, when things happen to you, you don't, you just don't know how it's happening. But obviously, because you're fellowshipping with other people, they, they are treating you, they value you, you know, they love you because you are part of that church family. But what I loved about it, as much as they were helping me through all the, you know, the, the parenting problems and, you know, everything else that was going on, 
I realized they were also doing lots of things in the community. So that did make me want to also spread my wings, go out in the community, help others, you know, other people in the community. So yeah, I really do appreciate um, you know, all the, 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 the hard work, the support that I've received from Wesley Place Methodist Church. And uh, yeah, I will carry on fellowshipping and um, uh, I'm really blessed that my boys are, you know, they, they have, um, have got their roots down in the church and uh, hopefully they will grow up to practice, you know, what they preach at the moment and they can pass it on to their children like I'm trying to do to them. Thank you. Reading is taken from Philippians 4, verses 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Well, Jesus is often found in the marketplace, mixed with the social outcasts, unwanted people, in an unimagined place that you find Jesus. This is all recorded in the Gospels. So my friend, if we committed to be the fishers man, we need to be more like Jesus, go into the marketplace and meet people, seeking those in need. It's easy said than done, isn't it? It could be a daunting task. We hear all the news, we heard about the information, where the people are, what we need to do, but the difficulty is we have to co overcome our hurdle to be able to mix with the people unlike us. We feel comfortable to be in a group of people, like-minded. But then how about mingle yourself into different culture Accept the distance, the differences of the different kind of people. Unfortunately, we do have preconceived idea. So the only way, in my opinion, to build an awesome relationship with our Lord Jesus, to be more Christ-like, that is our ultimate aim. Our second reason today. It's just so wonderful and telling us, in spite of a difficulty, and then Paul tells us, rejoice, always rejoice. What a good example. In spite of challenges, it's still rejoicing. Now, Paul is a typical example when he was with Silas in prison. Remember, instead of complaining, moaning, they sing praises louder, praise the Lord. When they praise, guess what? The prisons open. What was the outcome? Subsequently, there were people coming to follow Jesus. Can we see the picture? This is Paul's example. Because Paul go on to say, do not worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. What is Paul telling us? He's telling us that when we have worry, anxiety, turn it into prayer. Remember when we sing, What a friend we have in Jesus. Wow, you all know the lyric, you sing it all the time, but I will sing it in everyday life. Paul, example, he demonstrated in action. Friend, experience telling us when we take time to give 
give thanks to all circumstances. We discover more we have to be thankful for. And with a thankful heart, our worry and anxiety seems to go down in proportion. So my friend, this down to our personal choice. When we accept that, we make put it into practice. When we pray, we say, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look towards you and give you peace. I read some explanation and I must say, I use it to say my prayer before I go to bed to begin with. Because I say it, I mean it, I say, the Lord will bless me. The Lord will keep me. The Lord will make his face shine on me and gracious to me. And the Lord will look into my face and give me peace. What a valuable thing about that special peace beyond all our understanding which Jesus described, which is given to me personally. My friend, you got the choice too. They will give it to you when you convince that is for you. So to conclude, let's look at this. Through all the Bible story, we know God has chosen individuals to do his work, to perform his task. When he does this, he doesn't ask for resumes. He doesn't ask how prepared we think we are. And he doesn't care about the perceived obstacle either. He just said to us, get it done. If you look at Exodus chapter 4, verse 14, when Moses was extremely worried about his own inadequacy, God agreed to have Aaron speak for him. And we look at New Testament, Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Jesus said to his disciple, Obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. My brothers and sisters in Christ, God is still calling today. Will we hear it and take up the challenge? Amen. So now let's sing together. Sing in the faith, 404. God's spirit is in my heart. Sent me.
you. Wow, how often we have this opportunity to sit down and talk. I know. And we don't normally have the chance. No. And how are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah. yeah. How's the little one? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. yeah. He's all enjoying the holiday, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, mom is doing okay? Yes, thank you. Good, good, good. I'm just wondering, Dot, um, so when we get together, obviously, apart from the other thing, we like to talk about church, don't we? Yes. Because um, I've been wondering, when you took over the 025 and changed the name to Ark, yeah. do you have any reason why well, changing to Ark? We just wanted to um, do everything a little bit differently. So we wanted to um, show people that it was a new thing and um, the Ark symbolised really being a safe space, all the children coming aboard and, and, and being safe from the outside world for an hour. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that reminds me of Noah's Ark. Yes. Uh, when I'm thinking about Noah's Ark, the first thing I'm looking for, I'm thinking for, is also the rainbow. Yeah. So it's a sign of hope sure. and also signs of God's promise. So it's nice. It seems like the ark to provide a nice shelter for the children and for their parents as well. Yes. And they have a safe place and they feel comfortable. The parents, some of them joining joining you as well. Is that oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yes, the, the parents come along too so they can get a coffee. So or... I, I heard um, you did very well. You had a lot of attendance. Yes, we did. It was very popular. I think mm. people have missed it during the pandemic. They've, mm. um, they've often asked, when will we be back? Oh. <sighs> yeah, pandemic is just causing a lot of stumbling blocks. Yeah. But in the meantime, pandemic also create a lot of new opportunity yeah. as a church. And we have a fresh look at how we're going to move on and then try to maintain what we have to keep and what we have to improve. Yeah. So I'm sure you're the same with your group. With oh them. yeah, I mean, it's given us time to reflect mm -hmm. and um, work out what was done well and how we can uh, build on that mm -hmm. really. Um, mm -hmm. So just to make it even better That's when right. we go back. So when, when are you thinking about starting it? Because the church is starting now. Yeah, hopefully we'll be able to go back in September. The arcs turn time ta timetable, so hopefully, fingers crossed, when they uh, when the children go back to school, yeah. we'll have the art back mm -hmm. up and running. So anyway, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but Dot, have you ever thought about when the children they grow up? Yeah, they grow up. So have you thought about another way, and then to maintain that community? And well, so they would not be spread all over the place and say bye bye. We want them belong to the same family. Yes, I have, I have thought about it over the pandemic. Um, it came about on in my house group, and we were talking about teenagers and how over the pandemic their social groups may have changed and things, and and the difficulties they were having. And it got me to thinking that maybe we needed some sort of youth club, some social place where where anybody could come to and be able to um, see each other and build those friendship groups and that, that sort of community amongst themselves and i just thought that that might be a nice opportunity for them and um that's got talking to friends and, and other people about it and, and people were really keen and passionate about it and so I've got a good group of friends now who oh, all want wow. to do something and, and, and to the point now where other people are hearing about it and asking me wow. if they can be involved. So hopefully, wow. we need some planning, but hopefully we can take off. What a God sent mm -hmm. opportunity yeah. and then allow you to develop and then that is mission in action. Yes. Yeah, because that's what the church about church is not about confine everybody in the building no it's talking about sharing in the community today our theme is talk about sharing talk about mission mm -hmm. so could not be more appropriate than that yeah it's good we can bring up this subject to a discussion isn't it's it? good yeah yeah so hopefully it can involve people who want church in their life not necessarily a sunday service mm. people who 
who want to be involved in some way but don't really know how they can be I think this will give them the opportunity to to come into church and, and see what we're about and be part of that yeah that's lovely I really really wish all the success by doing that and surely you'll be assured you'll be supported by prayer by anything you need to I'm sure they've got willing members want to give you all the support but more importantly I do congratulate you have such good group to begin with so may God bless this new project and we go ahead <laughs> Almighty God we bring our concerns to you in prayer we pray for your world for all those suffering persecution conflict violence and human rights violations we bring before you the ongoing conflicts in Afghanistan, Yemen, Tigray, Myanmar, Belarus and Hong Kong. We pray that world leaders will set aside their differences and come together to take what drastic and radical measures are necessary to combat climate change. Help us to show compassion for people suffering due to fires, floods and droughts in many parts of the world. We pray for our own country, our politicians, people holding key positions in society, both nationally and locally, as well as those individuals who work selflessly away from the public eye. We pray for our church leaders, that they will speak out for truth and justice. We pray for Wesley Place, our Minister Rob, our leaders and members, as well as those on the fringes. Surround us with your love and revitalize us. We remember those in our congregation whose families are scattered around the world. You understand how we miss them. We bring before you those who are in poor physical and mental health and those mourning the death of a family member or friend. Finally, we pray for ourselves. You know our needs. Give us strength and vision to see the way ahead and courage never to lose hope. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Thank you for such a special time. We can think of the future of being church continually. I'd like to share some encouraging news to you all. To let you know that the Caring Cakes mission is going really well. So far, cakes have been delivered to approximately 50 people and seem to have been greatly appreciated. We'd like to thank all our bakers and those who've delivered as well. It's meant a lot to everyone. In order to continue to grow, we would like our pastoral visitors and anyone else to provide us with names of anyone who would appreciate a cake. If you can't bake, but would like to support us, any donation, however small, will be put towards our baking supplies. Thank you for your support in helping this baking mission to grow.
Thank you for sharing our time of worship. May we be inspired and go forth in faith. So let's share the grace so we can bless each other. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Hey.